Hello, and welcome again to another aircraft build on my model corner. The YF-23 is the second most requested model as of late. I was quite surprised at the enthusiasm for this subject. I must say I had to hit the books on this one. I was only vaguely familiar with the YF-23 and had forgotten much about it since it never went into production. After studying up on it, I was reacquainted with its alien and off-world appearance. It doesn't look like it's from planet Earth, to be sure. This model is large in scale, but small in the number of pieces. Included within this kit is an 8-page construction guide, a painting reference sheet that looks much like the F-22 Raptor camouflage scheme, and a problematic decal sheet. These do not include emblems for the YF-23s that were built, but rather insignia for a fictional jet based at Langley Air Force Base, Virginia. Additionally, the text around the command patches and the ejection seat warnings are just gibberish characters and not usable. Because of the whites and grays involved, making custom decals on home printers is challenging, if not impossible. To counter this, I have purchased aftermarket decals from Caracal Models that better suits our needs. I've provided a link in the description below if you're looking for such a decal set. Starting with the ejection seat and cockpit, we note that we do not have to make any special considerations atypical from any other military jet. The bulkheads and frames of the cockpit are the same standard gray with the ejection seat and the avionics panels in black. It's something we've all seen before. We'll continue to cut away the appropriate pieces in order to facilitate our initial construction and first bit of painting. The molded detail in the cockpit is pretty good. To start our first assembly, we attach the seat rails to the backboard of the seat. Looking ahead, there are numerous items that need to be prepped for white paint. The landing gear bays are not molded into the fuselage, nor are they molded as a single box unit. Each side of the bays has to be put together. We can cut non-delicate pieces right up to the part to decrease the amount of cleanup, and then employ a coarse file to remove the molding channel that remains, followed by a finer sanding stick to finish up. Since they are roughly two-dimensional parts, we can lay them flat on a pallet once they are ready. Some modelers do not like to paint parts on the sprue trees, yet it can be handier to leave the smaller and more delicate three-dimensional items on the tree. The sprue is movable, holds the piece in place while painting, and then serves as a drying rack afterwards. We can prep the part by removing leftover molded seams with a suitably shaped file or knife. Once the item is complete, we need only touch up areas after cutting the part away. This kit does not provide the option of displaying the aircraft with the cockpit canopy open. Making a modification is necessary to create this alternative. In keeping with the truly unique shape, we'll build with the cockpit glass in the down position. Still, we'll want to provide a decent amount of cockpit detail that may be viewable through the glass transparency. 
As in our previous builds, we'll scrape away some of the paint on the ejection seat to add wear and the impression of reflected light to emphasize detail. sanding sticks and the dull side of a hobby knife to scrape away our black paint, we can bring out the details of the knobs, switches, and panel lines that give the pilot station some more realism. Since this aircraft was the first of its kind kept in a pristine condition as possible, we need to minimize the detailing of the landing gear bays and equipment by adding minimal wash just to highlight the detail and create shadows. We don't really want to dirty these components up. After the wash is dry, we can build our compartments. Putting the bays together, these hydraulic lines appear as parallel pipes, but subsequent drawings show that they actually crisscross. One by one, we complete these sections. These parts fit pretty well together. All we have to do is make sure everything is square. The engine air intakes also need to be finished before we can begin mating the upper and lower fuselage halves. Now we can add the gear bays to the lower half of the jet. We can add the cockpit and the nose gear bay. The air intakes fit nicely in their cradles. We'll need to add some paint to the aft ports to avoid overspray into the burner sections before we attach them. In go the burners and the fan blades. A note in the illustration indicates we must add 20 grams of counterweight to balance the model. This is equivalent to four US nickels. I have a small spare pipe fitting that fits the bill. At last, we can join the main fuselage halves. Let's continue on by constructing our flight control surfaces. Let's also join the trapezoidal wings. Next, we use white glue to temporarily add our gear doors. This will protect the bays from overspray, allow us to add the primer coat to those doors, and also match our final colors and shading with the rest of the fuselage when we're done. We can also protect the engine ports and the cockpit with tape at this time. The seam lines around the wings are not so great here, so we'll use some putty and do some touch-ups. Before we begin the black shading, I want to mention that the factoids coming up concerning the names used in the YF-23 program are based on interviews with the actual pilots, Northrop engineers, and the caretakers of these aircraft. Unfortunately, the Wikipedia entry online has errors and has been passed around the internet as gospel.
For our next step, we'll add some highlighting to better match the look of PAV1 in this picture. Using the marbling technique and emphasizing some panel lines, we're setting up groundwork for our YF23 main color coat. Okay, as we add our main coat, we continue with the marbling technique. Using the combination of the NATO black coat, the white pre-shading, and the differing layers of the gray, we want to achieve those wonderful tonal variations that create a realistic worn and large scale appearance. Remember, we are not painting a fence, so sustaining that random look without going too far in any particular direction is essential to give ourselves and any onlookers something pleasing to observe. Although we are not going to heavily weather this model, we'll want to add a protective clear coat. I found that adding an initial light coat followed by a regular clear coat works best.
The model contains these engine louvers that are applicable to the PAV2 General Electric engine configuration. So we'll need to cut away the sawtooth portion since we're doing the Pratt & Whitney engines of the PAV1. Next, we dab our black oil paint to tarnish the aft tiling, replicating the heat stress experienced in this region. One item absent in this kit is the upper UHF antenna which we can easily take the time to cut a tab from the sprue and scratch build the missing antenna. It's just one of those things we can do to distinguish our model a little more. Next we'll add a light panel wash using black pastel powder, water, and a dab of dish soap. To clean up our wash, we're using a cotton swab once again just dipped in plain water. For our decal bonding, we'll use MarkFit. I should note that this custom decal set did not react very fast to the decal solution. As our example, we'll demonstrate the overall process using the emblems placed on one of the tail flight control surfaces. We have the ATF banner followed by the TAC insignia, the YF23 text, and then the tail number of PAV1. We've now reopened the landing gear bays to add the struts and wheels. The instruction pages concerning these steps are bloody awful. The image perspectives provide no insight as to placement of the parts and just feeling around on the model for proper alignment is difficult. After rolling out 180 degrees, we add our tail flight control surfaces. Finally, before we add the cockpit glass, it's time to apply two or three coats of the flat clear to even out the tone, seal in our work, and take the gloss out of the decals. It's about time to tow this jet out to the museum hangar. Take care, and we'll see you later.